So in the previous video, I stopped where, <coughs> where I showed you can do uh, edge trigger versus level trigger on external interrupt. So let's go to the next slide here. Look at that one already. Um, so I will do in another video rather, uh, I will do the examples from the, the book example 14 and example 15, where it says write a program that whenever interrupt zero goes low, it toggles PV5. So we will get to this one. I'm not going to do it here. Uh, they can also get what is called pin change interrupts. So what this actually means is the following. Um, you have got three ports on this specific AVR. Port B, port C, and port D on this at mega 328P. So what we have with this option is we can actually go to port B and say, if, uh, let's say, pin number four is changing, uh, then you should be interrupted. So in other words, if it's a zero and it's changing to a one, you can get interrupt inter interrupted. And if it's changing from a one to a zero again, you will again get interrupted. So we can specify that. So this specific, uh, uh, this, uh, this is, I suppose this is called the pin change mask, uh, mask zero, zero is associated with port B. Mask one is with C and mask two. Uh, port, chain, uh, port change mask register is with D here in other words. Nah. So there's another register, which I will they will show in the next page or the next slide, which actually, maybe I should go to that one first of all. So there's this, uh, this is called the pin change interrupt. There's a, there's a register by the name of pin change interrupt control register. So again, if you look at this specific register, it's got this PCI E0, uh, pin change interrupt uh, enable, I suppose, yeah, pin change interrupt enable 0. This is associated with port B. So if you want anything, as it says here, uh, if you want any of the pins on port B to be part of this pin change interrupt, this must be a 1. If any of the pins on port C must uh, be, uh, if, if they change state and you want an interrupt, this must become a 1. And if any of the pins on port D, if you want them to activate an interrupt, you must also make this one a one. So this zero here is associated with port B, that one is associated with C, and this is associated with D. Um, what you see here at the bottom is exactly what we saw there. So this slide, if I go to this slide, if I want, for instance, to say any changes on port C, um, let's say pins uh, two and three. If if there are, if there's any change happening on pin two and three of port C, then what should be done? Well, I have said this one here, this one is associated with port C, so that must be made a one. And pin two and three, so that we, we will go to port C, zero, one, two, and three. So I will set this pin as a high, and I'll set this pin as, as a high. So if there's any change on pin number two, I will get go into the interrupt service routine. If there's a change on pin number three, I'll go into the interrupt service routine. So this is how, let's take another example. If I want to say, if there's a change on pin D6, uh, port D6, I want to be interrupted. So I'll have to activate this one, which is uh, associated with port D, and I'll have to make this also a one, which is pin number six. This is pin seven sitting here, this is pin number six. So this is what I will do. If I, I can make, I, at this stage I've given examples of one pin here and two pins here in port number C. But I mean, if you want to have four bits or five or even seven bits, if there's a change of any bit, you can activate all seven bits, if, or sorry, all eight bits. If you, sorry, not on C, because P port C has only got uh, seven pins, but port B has got eight and port C has also got eight. Uh, the seven, of course, for this port C is because of the microcontroller. It's limited to seven pins uh, eight th the at mega 328P. So, but this is how you do pin change interrupts. It is possible to make, to have a look at any pin change can interrupt you. Um, here's an example. Again, I will explain it in the next video, which is example 10, uh, 16. In this case, it says PB0, PB2 and 3 are connected to switches. 
So that's an input at this stage. Write a program that makes PB5 toggle. Uh, it's not toggler, no, it's toggle. When any, whenever any of the switches change state. So uh, we'll have to then, in other words, 0, 2, and 3. And it's port B, if I can go back. So I will make this bit a 1 on this PCIe 1. I'll make this a 1. Um, sorry, I'm talking nonsense. Uh, this I'll make this one a 1 because that's on port B. Now I'll make this one a 1. And then it says, so we'll have to look at port B. And it's uh, 0, 2, and 3. So in other words, but 0 here, but 2 here, and but 3 here. Those will be the ones that will be made a 1. And this is how you will do your setup for this specific arrangement. But as I've said in the next video, I will explain example 10, 16 also. Um, Interrupt priority. In the beginning of my first video, I've said uh, we would, I would prefer if you do not uh, change any priority here, uh, just to show you what the interrupt priority is. Let's talk about external interrupt zero again which is that n z int 0. It's as you can see, the lower the address, the higher the, the, the priority. So this has got the highest priority. Uh, so if it should happen that interrupt request 0 and 1 happens at exactly the same time, it will execute this first one here, which is interrupt 0. And once it's finished, it will go to this one and execute interrupt number 1. So this is what the priority means. In other microcontrollers, it's quite easy. You can actually change the, if you really want to, you can change this uh, interrupt priority, but that's not advisable, so rather stay away from that. Um, let's look at this interrupt inside an interrupt. Again, this is looking for trouble. If you want to do an interrupt and be interrupted while you're busy with that interrupt, so I would, uh, I would like to say rather stay away from that. Um, it says here, as soon as you go into an interrupt, the I flag is cleared when the AVR begins to execute an interrupt service routine. So this is happening automatically. So if you go into an interrupt service routine, the I flag is actually zero, which means you can, there's no interrupt acted, activated at that stage. Um, so all interrupts are disabled. The I flag is set when, uh, the, this is a assembly language instruction, but what this basically means is, the I flag will may be set again, it will be made one. The moment that you get out of your interrupt service routine, it will automatically be restored to a one. And the interrupts, uh, the global interrupt enable is then actually on. So uh, it will again continue with the operation. And this is a, a short, short three videos on what happens to interrupts inside uh, a microcontroller specifically, these videos are linked to uh, external interrupt, pin change interrupt, um, and not at this stage at timer interrupts. But it doesn't really matter because uh, each and every different peripheral has got its own set of uh, registers associated with that specific interrupt. So each and every one, once you've got the, the basics of what an interrupt is and how it operates, it happens in exactly the same way for all different peripherals. So this is just an introduction, but with this you should be able to manage in future. This is then the end of the three videos. I will discuss the other, uh, I will discuss the, in another video I will do some examples on what I've done today. Thank you.